Hello, everyone, uh, Prime Log um, viewers uh, in Ethiopia uh, and our viewers here. Um, today, uh, I have a special guest. Uh, her name is Yerusalem Kibret. Um, for those of you who don't know her, uh, she was um, last week present in the New York City March as well as Washington, D.C., and she gave, an, uh, she gave an excellent speech in regards to why um, Ethiopians were marching. And um, uh, she really captivated uh, uh, many <laughs> audiences and has gone viral since then. Um, we are very proud of her uh, because uh, her speech was uh, a clear uh, message uh, for all the people that were uh, participants at the March. So I'm very happy to welcome uh, Yerusalem or Jerry. Uh, Jerry, welcome. Um, I want to ask you to introduce yourself briefly. Tell us where you're from, um, uh, what are you doing currently, and um, how um, uh, you got involved uh, about Ethiopia. Awesome. Well, you kind of mentioned my name, so I am Jerusalem, uh, Yerusalem. Um, born and raised in Ethiopia. I moved um, here uh, when I was in high school um, and went to college and I graduated in 2018 with an MBA with an emphasis in health system management. Um, so I work for a health system organization currently. Um, and what got me into um, today, um, I think just um, seeing what's been happening and I just felt like there weren't enough people who are well informed and who are um, bold enough, I guess, to speak about our country and I felt like um, I kind of had to defend my country and, you know, say, you know, that's not the true image that we're that were being projected, um, you know, via different social media. And so I kind of felt like responsible to say, that's not true. That's not, you know, how my people operate. And so um, I think that's what kind of got me into uh, being a little vocal and bold and um, trying to speak the truth pretty much. Great. Um, I think uh, you said you were born in Addis Ababa. So um, uh, the, the images that you know that we're seeing or what we're hearing about Ethiopia especially um, uh, when we're talking about um, uh, you know ethnic cleansing and genocide and um, people really um, turning into enemies um, that that is a very sad moment you know that is a very it's very sad to even have these kind of words um, uh, being used and acts being actually committed, uh, especially when you think about, you know, how we are raised. So how do you, um, um, why is it, why is this shocking? Is this shocking to you that uh, Ethiopia is currently in the situation that it is today? Um, it is shocking to me, you know, like you said, I grew up in Addis Ababa, like in Farnsai Legacion, and so I grew up in a community where there were everybody. Um, there were all kinds of different ethnicity. And so I never really, um, to me at least, I never really felt like there was that much hate as far as like, you know, really focusing on cleansing ethnicity or doing genocide of a specific group. And so when the whole thing came, I think it, it put a little bit of doubt and confusion in me to say, you know, is this what's going like, you know, what is causing all this movement, right? And so, but then you see, you, you review the history and you see there is a clear agenda that's, that's being uh, implemented, right? And so uh, for me, I kind of started, well, these things are being instigated by someone, right? There is someone behind it that's creating this. And so why are they doing that is for me, right? Um, and I think you hear a lot of like, you know, this is my ethnicity, so forget this ethnicity. I'm just going to defend this ethnicity. And so all these things, and I'm like, no, but we should, like, it's our country, and we should be um, holding hands, and we should be trying to figure out, okay, who's doing it, and how can we come out of this together, um, instead of, you know, um, feeling like you care more about this specific ethnic group because you're from that group, and I think that's, I think that's what hurt the most, for me at least, 
is that the fact like because just because I am from Oromo or Amara, I only care about that specific ethnic group. And I feel like that's just really wrong because I think we should be caring about everyone because there are people, there are blood. We've had, you know, more than 3000 years of ex um, togetherness. And so um, anything that comes to divide that, I think is igniting the situation and putting gasoline over already what's going on. Um, so I feel like regardless of what ethnicity you are you should be standing together and you should be you know feeling as hurt as the other person and so um yeah that's kind of what makes me really passionate about the topic of like you know um, we should be speaking for everyone um and trying to unite our country as our ancestors have done in the past great you know i actually kind of jumped in um and went deep from the first question but i kind of want to back up and you know ask you, you know, what, why is civic engagement important? One of the things that um, when I started getting involved in um, Ethiopian matters is, you know, from college time, uh, I learned that, you know, civic engagement is very important. So when you're living in the US, it's very important that you vote, it's important that you stay engaged. Um, if there's any social matters, you know, to advocate. But when it comes to Ethiopia, um, for some reason, civic engagement is kind of frowned upon. So when I started advocating or when I started talking about Ethiopia, I got a lot of, um, a lot of negative feedbacks to, you know, for me to, why are you doing this? You know, what's your mission? What's your, you know, do you have any political ambition and, in, and so forth? And a lot of questions. Some people obviously encouraged me, but um a good amount of people were you know saying do not get involved in politics so what do you want to say to you know young people especially um that are having these uh, thoughts you know whether this is their right whether this is something that they should you know engage uh, uh in what what do you say about the importance of civic engagement i think it's very crucial right um especially with i think um, especially for the diaspora, I think we've always been told that Kitope is victorious, right? So we've always hung on to that. Um, you know, we're a country, we've never been colonized. Uh, we are a country of kings. And so we have all the positive things. And so I feel like this time around all the propaganda going around about you know ethnic cleansing and division and religious based hate and all these things i think people feel a little bit conflicted and don't know like which like like what like do i need to pick a side like you know what 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 should i be doing confusion um and so i feel like that's what a lot of people are hesitant and not as engaged because they're just scared of like you know wh which side am i like am i supposed to pick a side especially in the day like in the diaspora but then i think the other um key important thing is like it's important for us to be vocal right because people with agenda they have strategy, right? They, they know what they're doing because they have a planned out, like this is what they're gonna do um, in order to get here. And, but then when you're talking about the general public, it's usually like you don't think about it, right? It's just like, this is what it is. And so um, I think, but now that um, you see a lot of going thing, things going around, I felt like we really have to be engaged what is what truly what's the image of ethiopia because that's what we have to project right now right like um because there is just a lot of um misinformation going around and i think as the young generation we have the responsibility you know what that's not true this is what you know this is what i know um you know from what i've been exposed to and so we have to be engaged in these conversation and we have to start speaking the truth because it's like really crucial because i think it's um i feel like what's been happening um the last couple months has just been distorting the image of ethiopia and i think it could have a long a lasting impact um should we choose to not speak up should we choose to just tolerate it um you know there is a saying that um when you tolerate people for a long time you're just teaching people how to treat you and so i feel like especially for an african country um i think we've done that for a long time and um we like for me personally i felt like i don't i just don't want my country to be labeled this way or the other way and i want to be able to say that's not true 
Um, and, and so I think that's very important. And I think the diaspora has the responsibility to engage. I want to go to my next question um, um, in regards to, you know, some of the feedbacks that people get when they're advocating uh, for Ethiopia is, um, you know, about victims that are going um, through a lot right now, uh, people who are uh, losing their homes, being refugees, um, hospitals being looted, women being raped. Um, so many atrocities are happening um, because um, it's a chaotic time in, um, in, in the Tigray region, especially, and some other parts of the country. And um, I remember when I was a child, when we had a transitional period from Mangustu Halamariam time to um, uh, the previous leadership, there was more, you know, a time where things were very chaotic. There was gunshots, bombs, and people were looting, people were robbing. It was a time that we really couldn't leave the house because it was very unsafe. We didn't know who was doing these uh, crimes. Most of the time, the crimes were being committed by people who were opportunistic, and it could have been your neighbor. So it was a very unsafe period. Um, uh, anyway, I wanted to, you know, have you gotten some of those kind of feedbacks where people feel like just because you're actually advocating for, you know, peace for all, um, you know, let's get really figure out what the problem is um, uh, instead of um, pinning one uh, ethnic city against another. Um, are you getting feedbacks from people that you're not advocating for victims enough? And do you feel like, um, um, like, I feel like the fact that all these other accusations and false propaganda is actually taking away from the victims that, you know, that people can mobilize to support, to help. Uh, I feel like they are suffering more um, because people are trying to use this as their political gain. What do you think about that? Um, I agree 100% with, with what you just said. Um, I think people are using it as a, a to gain political advantage, right? Because um, you see, you know, we say in one hand, um, there are victims who don't have food to eat, who don't have water tr to drink, and then on the other side, you hear the, you know, don't donate, you know, these people are not going to use the donation money to help or, you know, when you're um, asking uh, other governments to defund Ethiopia or, you know, and so I always question, what is your pure intention? Is it really to help the people or do you have another agenda, right? Because I feel like people who truly care wouldn't say those things, right? Regardless of what it takes, you want to say your mom is hurt you want someone to run and help your mom. Um, you forget all the other things. Maybe there are bad people who will take advantage of the donation money, or uh, maybe we need to investigate the government on how they handle the situation, whatever it may be. But the fact is, the people at the scene need help, right? And so to me, let's get them help. And then all the other accusation, investigation, all that we can work on, right? But right now, how can we come as a family or a country or however you want to word it and actually provide support to those people, right? Instead of further dividing ourselves and then promoting, hey, actually like go and do this intentionally, go burn this, go hate on that, go kill this person. And so I think it takes away from the main, like, you know, why we, like, why are you even, you know, you're not really advocating. So what, you know, it, it just takes away from the whole point. Um, and then I think people just need to really pause and, and, and question, okay, what is the intention? And is there a motivation behind, right? Because I feel like sometimes um, people who are especially like in social media um, say things because of lack of information. I don't think they understand the whole situation. I think they go at it from either they're this ethnic group, so they think they're obligated to support that ethnic group, um, or they're just deceived by what, you know, the misinformation that's going around. And so um, I think we have to um, resolve the misinformation and that the only way we're going to do that is by sharing the truth. Um, and then I, you know, for people who um, speak 
um, you know, badly about a certain group or this and that or about just unity or they feel like they they're more responsible to a certain group more than others um, I would suggest maybe doing you know a little more research right and let me see what's the background um, how did this how did we get here right because oftentimes if you can understand the cause then you can come up with a solution right um, but if we're constantly just pouring gasoline on the fire, the fire is not going to come out. Um, it's just going to maybe get bigger and bigger. And so um, that, that's sort of uh, what I think about it. I think sometimes we're pouring gasoline on the fire and just warming around it. Um, and, and I think that hurts the people who are, who are suffering. And so um, I think we need to, we have the responsibility to um, solve that with social media i think one of the things that i noticed also is that the negative message is much 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 more louder right and the people that want to kind of portray a positive message as saying like listen you know um, um i personally don't believe in any ethnicity being clean and anything you know like there's problems with every ethnicity there's problems with um uh, people's characters everywhere you know it's it's not like there is um, an ethnicity that's right over the other uh, so uh, in order for things to be solved um, people who actually are able to uh, unite or people who actually have positive outlook and uh, positive agenda really I think we you kept saying that what's the agenda behind who have a positive agenda of equality and for people to coexist voice needs to come you know much more louder and why why do you think um young people you know uh you're young why are young people i mean my own friends um think you know i'm crazy for doing what we're doing right now so um why do you think um they are feeling this way why why is our young people um, feeling like this is just not the way to engage uh, in civic engagement. Um, like I think, like I said, I think there's a lot of misinformation and people are just confused about, you know, who to believe, right? Because it's like, because if you're not engaged throughout the whole, like what is, you know, what is the overview? And then you can, you're able to nip at it from different perspective, right? Because on this side, you're saying, oh, someone is dying, dying, and this is happening and this is happening. And so it's very um, conceiving, right? It's like, no, we don't want anybody to die, right? But then on this side, you have people who are like, well, like we shouldn't be doing that. And so I think there's just a lot of misinformation out there where people, I feel like people are confused. People don't know, okay, do I pick a side? Like, is there a side to pick? Or like, and so I think that to me personally, I think there's just a lot of communication, lack of communication and misinformation, and people are just confused as to you know, what, what do I speak, speak for, right? And so, but, and then there is like the political aspect of it, right? It's like, well, I'm not political, right? And I don't want to be, I don't want to be political. And so um, there's just a lot of different things. But like I said, if people have to come at it from, you know, what is the history? Um, and then what do I believe, right? Do I believe in unity? And I think people, you know, people try to use the emotional intelligence and um, guilt um, to say, because even when you speak about unity, right, we should be one, right? It's all positive, right? Let's, if you get hurt, I, I get hurt, right? Like, I, like I get hurt because you are my people, regardless if you believe in or not, we are one by blood. And so, um, but even to to pass that message some people feel differently and very strongly and they then they label you label you different things right well then that means you support genocide or like you know ethnic cleansing and it's like we're, how did we get here um all i said was let's be united and let's stand together and so it makes it really tricky but i think one thing that like like for me personally at least is first like what's my intention you know for me personally I, i've been saying i'm not political i have no interest in being a political or an activist or whatnot right but i do believe that the world is 
portraying Ethiopia as um, a really ugly country um, with people who don't get along, with ethnicity um, that clash all the time and kill each other and all these negative things, which is not true. That if that was our history, Ethiopia today wouldn't exist. That is not our history. That's not who we are. And so I feel personally responsible to tell the world that's not who we are. Our history, regardless of what you do, tells you the true story and you don't need even explanation. When all countries were colonized because we united and we stayed together and we fought people who had weapons and machineries, we, fought, we won and we didn't have them, we lacked it. People didn't have proper uniform and proper shoes to go to war, but because they came together and they were able to protect our country. And that's the, you know, the price that our ancestors pay, paid in order to keep Ethiopia to this day, right? And so I think it's, you know, it's not as, you know, as they're trying to portray Ethiopia. And I feel responsible in a, in a today's technology world um, to tell that and to say, you know, Ethiopia has welcomed Muslim into our country way before anybody else did, um, you know, and those things are what kept us, kept Ethiopia going. And so even today we have people who are married across ethnicity, all across different ethnicity, and things that you can't separate these people because they've been, that's been happening for thousands of years. And so um, when people come today and they say, you know, I am this ethnicity and that's all I am, I'm like, no, if ethnicity were to be found in your DNA, I am sure you have plenty more, you know? And so, and I think we need to communicate that loudly and clearly um, to the younger generation, right? Is I feel like most of them know and are aware of that, but there is that labeling again. It's like if you're for unity and you, if you say one Ethiopia, we're all the same people, you know, we love each other, you can't separate us, then it's like, well, then you support genocide or ethnic cleansing or um, you think you're superior or you're this and that. And so, but that's not true. And I think there is not, you know, they, in, in Amharic, they have that saying that um, silence is gold, right? And so I think people literally take it and we raise kids with that mentality of like silence is gold and so I feel like the diasporas don't feel that don't have that confidence to say this is what I stand for and I'm gonna battle you for it right and so but I think that's what we as you know things are changing um I feel like the diaspora or the younger generation should be paying close attention to that and we really have to defend our country because truly what is being portrayed is not um, the true image of our country so even you know for uh for young people who who are born here um i have a lot of cousins who are born here um you know they some of them go and visit ethiopia and so forth and um they might be engaged here in the u.s um but are not engaged in Ethiopian matters, um, what kind of message do you have for them? Why should they be concerned or why should they, um, you know, if they don't know about their history or if they need to learn that, uh, then, you know, why they should learn? Because, uh, I mean, I'm also in the public health field and I realize, um, I realized a long time ago that our world is becoming much, much smaller. It's a global, um, the global world is, is, is small, uh, we're interconnected, what happens elsewhere is, you know, um, important uh, uh, everywhere. Uh, what do you say to the young people who feel like, well, I'm born here, I don't know if I'm going to ever move to Ethiopia, or, um, you know, um, regardless of the type of connection they have currently, why do you, how and why do you think that they should be involved? Um. I, I think it's our identity, you know, I know I have a lot of um, African American friends in college and even in high school who want to know, oh, you know, I would be cool if I know exactly where I came from, where I originated from, right, where my ancestor came from. Um, and so for me personally, I've always, and maybe because that I had that experience, I've always felt that being as a treasure, right, and I was born, luckily I was born in Ethiopia, but um, I think it's important even for people who are born here um, to know, right, you know, what is my background, um, you know, who, who were a big influencer and, you know, how, how was, you know, how did my parents grow up and, and all that thing, all the history and the background. And so 
I think it's really important and really part of kind of your identity to, to know that, right? And to see, you know, what is, what, what, what is the culture? Because history changes, right? Histories are told. Um, so maybe many years down the line, maybe your kids would ask you, hey, where did you come from? What, you know, what, what was growing up like for your parents or your grandparents? And so I think it's very important to, um, to have a really good understanding of where you come from, what your background looks like, you know, who were who um, most influential people during that time. And so um, I really encourage, um, you know, even the diasporas who are born here and who might not have, a, who might not be as passionate as I am um, because they were never born there or they don't have that connection. Um, really invest the time to learn more because at the end of the day, I, I felt like that is their identity. Um, and and um, it's different when you're there and when you understand the, the history from directly from the people there versus when it's written on a book by a Westerner or by whoever, right? Uh, who may have different agenda. And so um, I think it's really important to understand that. Um, also, I want to talk about, you know, um, uh, our parents' experiences, because I think um, for young people, um, th their experience uh, about Ethiopia can sometimes mean through the experiences that their parents had. Um, so, um, you know, sometimes those experiences could be positive, it could be a great experience, and then sometimes it might not be a, a great experience, because um, as we know, everyone's life um, journey is different. So now we're, and we look back to the experiences of our families, whether it's positive or negative, and we judge um, uh, Ethiopia based on, uh, uh, based on, on that history somewhat, you know, that's part of our culture. This is, you know, um, let's say my parents um, have been abused or they've had a great life or whatever experience they have. I learned through that. What is your message to people, you know, who, who, um, who have come through different difficulties or different experiences and sometimes trauma can be passed on, you know, like one of the things that I feel like I've worked in mental health for many years. And, um, one of the problems that I see in Ethiopia and, um, politics or in Ethiopia, uh, in general is that we have trauma passed on into our kids and um, even if they have not experienced it directly there is this fear um, and there is this and sometimes you actually see those fears happening too unfortunately how do we get young people um, both who have positive and negative experience through family uh, trauma um, to have a better outlook to better to have a um, to have a uh, a fight for the country because obviously Ethiopia is not a just place. You know, we have a lot of work to do. There's a lot of things that need to be done, but it starts with every one of us. First, we have to be engaged. Second, we have to be on our own, have a positive um, contribution instead of pointing fingers, instead of attacking each other, instead of labeling each other. Um, we need to have a positive uh, outlook for each other. So what do you say to those young kids or young adults who have experienced uh, negative trauma or negative outlooks about Ethiopia because of um, previous generation experiences? How can they change that? How can they contribute positively? And why is it important that their voice uh, matters too, that their voice counts too? Um, yeah, it's, it's, that was a tough question. <laughs> um, you know, I think I, I actually recently had a, com a similar, com somewhat similar conversation with a friend of mine. Um, and we're just um, having conversation pretty much the, the, the same thing about, you know, inheriting hate or inheriting um, whatever it may be that your parents have experienced. Um, so I think my suggestion would be for the parents to give the autonomy to the their kids to learn on their own, right? Like give them the chance to learn for themselves, right? Uh, maybe you can give them hints here and there. Um, but I think 
giving them the benefit of the doubt and letting them, you know, this is your culture, this is your country, these are some books you can read, um, and then letting them decide that for themselves. And um, because it is really important, at the end of the day, you don't want um, your kids to, well, at least, um, <laughs> right, in a, in a normal atmosphere, you wouldn't want your kids to inherit hate or division or whatever it may look like. And so I think giving them or making them empowered enough so that they are able to find that out for themselves, right? Um, if you say this part of the history I don't like because it hurt me when I was growing up or whatever that may look like, um, what, what, why don't you let them decide that, right? You, maybe you give them some book or, you know, um, you say, you know, go read some books, go do some research on it and come back to me what you learned from it instead of you know, saying this spe specific group of people or this specific part of this history is bad, you know, and then just feeding that to, to the younger generation. And I think that as, as a young, especially a diaspora, I think they, we should also owe the responsibility of you know, not just being fed, but also going after things and saying, let me, you know what, let me learn about it. Let me do my re research and let me go and find out what the perception of the public is and how that impacted the history of Ethiopia and all that stuff. And I think when you do that, you get a better understanding, right? So we're not being narrow-minded as to, well, this person or this group of people told me this is the history, so I'm gonna take it. And, you know, and also being open-minded enough to, to, to look at the different perspective out there, right? So you're not just, you know, if I believe this, then that's the only way to go. Why not look at the other side and, and, and see, okay, well, then now I have both sides and I can evaluate both and decide what's good for me. Um, and so I highly encourage parents to do that and then the younger diaspora also to go, you know, to go out and do, do that. And um, that would be helpful, I believe. Sorry, for, um, for our uh, last uh, part of the discussion, I wanna um, uh, talk about what are some of the things that um, we as um, the diasporas can do uh, to engage the youth um, I know there are a lot of initiatives uh, that are going to be coming forth um, in the near future um, uh, to, uh, to get young people uh, um, engaged. Um, what are some of the ideas that you think will help attract young, young people? Because one of, the, uh, uh, one of the challenges I've heard a parent say um, is that, um, you know, uh, somewhat wherever you grew up, the community that you grew up, um, uh, around in the diaspora um, might have either maybe you go to a church or you go to a, um, a neighborhood and people might have the same type of mentality and when people have you know like you said research or people have figured out something or don't have a lot of options to go and network elsewhere uh, unless it's with the same people that they kind of grew up with or they've been associated with so um, there is obviously needs to be an outlet for people to actually go and meet other people, network, get to listen to different views. I mean, that's been my, my number one thing that I've learned. I have grown so much in the last four or five years because I've extended myself to different communities. Um, and what I mean by different communities, I'm, I'm not just talking about with communities that think just like me. I'm talking about with different communities that are not exactly thinking like me or people who are not, we're not in the same um, background. We don't come from the same background and upbringing. And that has really taught me a lot. And I think that's one of the things that young people lack. Um, so what are some of your ideas of, you know, how to kind of attract uh, the young people to be a spokesperson just like you? Awesome. I think one of the things that I've seen within my community is we lack young leaders. Um, so, and oftentimes it's um, people lead by example, right? So you only fo fo follow people that you associate yourself with. And so, especially within the Havasha community, I feel like we oftentimes the leaders are, you know, our fathers or our grandfathers or our mothers. And so it's really hard to 
um, associate yourself, right? Because you don't see that being done by so someone similar to you. And so I think that's one area of opportunity for us as a community um, to try and um, get young leaders involved, right? And that might take a, you know, a little more effort in the beginning to even attract that, right? Um, who is able to lead the team or, you know, get this initiative um, going. But then once you do that, um, I feel like that young leader will be able to help, right, encourage, and hopefully other young um, diasporas will be able to join that initiative and say, hey, you know what, I would love to be part of it. And I, I do truly believe there's a lot of young people who would love the opportunity to be able to defend our country and be able to do, you know, um, literally what I did is pretty much tell the truth, at least to my knowledge, you know, there may be other perceptions, is, is defend my country and tell the truth, right? And, and, and all I asked is that we unite, right? When whatever ethnicity hurt, we all should be hurting, period. And so I feel like there is a lot of young people who echo the same voice. And I've seen it even just in a couple last days, in the last few days, I've seen it because I've had a lot of young people reach out to me just saying, hey, thank you, by the way, thank you for telling the truth. Like that's exactly what was in my heart, um, you know? And so I think we just need that first step of feeling them encouraged and empowered enough um, to take that first step. And so once we do that, I think we'll be able, you know, a lot of them will be able to come um, up front and be able to join this movement of uniting our country and really um, sharing the true picture of Ethiopia. I think, um, I mean, I, I can go on and on um, about this topic. I am really delighted to meet you. Um, I think um, we will definitely uh, be in touch because um, I believe that you will be making a lot of difference in uh, advocating for Ethiopia as well as encouraging other young people um, um, to join you. Um, again, this is we're not advocating for any um, uh, ethnicity um, uh, in particular. We are advocating for equality. We want Ethiopia to um, to be for everyone. Um, we are always hurting with any you know innocent victims, but we also um, speak out confidently against any misinformation and misrepresentation of our people and our country. I'm really honored to be um, with you today. Um, I hope um, uh, we, we will do more together. Um, and uh, our audiences, uh, I think this will be the conclusion of our uh, brief uh, stay with Jerry. Uh, Jerry, thank you so much for taking your time and um, being part of Prime Log. Um, hope to have you as a guest again um, sometime soon. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me as well. I appreciate that. Thank you.